ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I got to put y'all on pause because I want to show y'all something. Hold on one second. As you can see, I'm deleting some extra programs that are on the computer uh, that are duplicates. And so while I'm doing that, I'm going to share some information with you. And you guys can look at the fishies because perhaps we can all talk about those who will be sleeping with them very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, this young lady is going to tell you what the first reports were yesterday, the same reports I heard about what's going on over in Israel. The reports, well, I'm going to let her talk, but to let you know that this most definitely was a false flag. This is going to be likened to the United States 9-11. Same thing that I said. I told people that they were going to make this like 9-11. That's why I said it. It's false flag, false flag, false flag. Oh, Lord. So just to let you know, no conspiracy, go ahead and listen to what she says. I'm going to let her speak. I ain't going to interrupt her not one time. Well, maybe at least once. One second. Let me see if I can get her to, to talk to us, okay? Come on, young lady. We ain't got all day. See, you got to wait for that circle to complete. See, it's the circle of life. Okay, so we got to wait for us to go back to back to uh, the Lion King and complete the circle. So here she comes. October 7th, 2023. This is a flat and gentlemen. Here to share an update from Israel Hamas war, which started this morning. I'm going to share some key details and concerns, mostly based on Israeli citizens' voices from the ground and based on official statements. This is a very very tough day for me and for us in Israel, and it is tough for people of Palestine too, especially now that Israel is starting to attack back. This war and every war is a horrible thing for everyone involved, except for those who get rich from it, right? This morning, around 6 a.m., around sunrise, hundreds of Hamas terrorists, at least 300, breached the border fence in multiple places, completely unimpeded, leading to terror attacks and kidnappings in Israeli towns or villages. The terrorists infiltrated a significant number of dry land outposts as well as a naval naval infiltration point in between. As we speak, Israel is actively engaged in combat in 22 outposts. This is from the IDF statement, the official statement. The attacks have already resulted in over 100 casualties and more than 100 kidnaps of Israeli citizens. In one village, 50 Israelis have been taken hostage, leaving people locked in shelters for long periods of eight to nine hours without rescue. By the way, the 100 kidnappings is not the official number. It's what we hear from people on the ground. I think official numbers talk about 30 or 40 people, but we know there are more. Um, in some places, the terrorists were burning the village, and people didn't know if to leave the shelter and surrender or stay and pray for the fire to not reach them. Many young people who were in a big outdoor party near the Gaza Envelope villages were attacked there. Some ran away, some were injured, and some are still missing. Apparently, Apparently, Israeli Israeli defense forces forces that were supposed to be around around Gaza were placed around the West Bank Bank because of security concerns concerns so that the the Gaza envelope was less unoccupied unoccupied with military. They say around 60 to 80 percent of that area was left without the IDF forces that were supposed to be there. Soldiers are being recruited for reserves as we speak from uh, this morning, but because of stupid reasons such as no public transport, they're waiting hours to get to the bases. Mainstream media, this is an interesting point, apparently uh, admits that IDF spokesperson is forbidding them to tell the complete truth about what's happening, highlighting a lack of transparency, and this is to the Israeli citizens, I'm not even talking about overseas, I'm talking about to the people of Israel here. For hours and hours, the reports that came from the mainstream media were completely lacking, and people started to rely mostly on the news from each other, from people on the ground. 
Only now, Only now 6 p.m. Israel time. Oh, it's actually 7 already. At 12, At 12 hours after the event started, we received the first formal statement from the IDF spokesperson, and I will include an article with that statement in the note. A year, ago, a year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare, prepare for such events, and ongoingly, there are trainings, there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises, this raises serious questions for me, anyway, about Israeli, Israeli intelligence. intelligence. What happened? Two years, Two years ago, ago, there, were, um, there, was, there a was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly, exactly on these kind of, kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has, Israel has one, one of the most advanced and high-tech high armies. How come, How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. A cat moving alongside the fence is triggering old forces. Is this? What happened, what happened to the strongest, to the strongest army, army in the world? In the world? How, come How come border crossings crossing were, were wide open? Something is, Something is very wrong here. Something is, Something is very strange. strange. This, chain, this of chain of events is very unusual and not typical for the Israeli defense system. With the recent, With the recent normalization efforts of Israel and Palestine led by Saudi Arabia, I wonder whether a prisoner's exchange deal is something that could only be seriously considered by Israel if a shocking event like that happened. Is it, is it a possibility, a possibility that, only that only with Israel hostages it can be justified to release dangerous prisoners from Israeli prisons? I don't know. I don't know. Mainstream, Mainstream media, media reported, reported that Deputy Hamas leader, leader Salah al aruwi suggests using Israeli prisoners for leverage in negotiations, so maybe. So maybe. A, point a point about the situation in Israel, in Israel in the past few years, years which I want to make, is related, is related to, uh, and, and those who follow me know, know that, that there's a, There's a general sense of insecurity in Israel. In Israel. There's political, political and social instability and unrest. And public, public funds are being misused on agendas such as COVID, COVID climate, judicial, judicial reform, reform, abolishing, abolishing cash, cash, and many more. The current, the current government, government is highly corrupt, in my view, while, while the previous, previous one no was no better. I don't care, I don't about, care about having a popular opinion. opinion. I, care I care about exposing evil forces wherever and whomever they are. They are. So, to me, so to me, this surprise, surprise attack seems like, seems like a planned, planned operation, operation on all fronts. This is a, this failure, is a failure to protect the people, the people of, Israel, of Israel, for sure. For sure. Perhaps, Perhaps the biggest failure since the Yom Kippur War, War exactly 50 years ago, years ago if not bigger. bigger. By the way, is it a coincidence that exactly 50 years ago, almost on the day, the Yom Kippur War was on October 6, 1973? If I was a conspiracy, that this feels like the work of the deep state. Say it ain't so! The people of Israel and the people of Palestine have been sold once again to the higher powers that be. At the same time, same time this, is this is still very, very, very difficult to fathom. Have a, good have a good evening. You have a good evening too, young lady. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, as I said in a false flag video I did yesterday, I have seen this. I've actually been waiting 13 years. You know, I told some people, including, like I mentioned, there was a young man in Puerto Rico in a metropolitan detention center, and he was a shot caller. And he and I would talk every day. And no, we weren't in the Metropolitan Detention Center. We were actually in the, uh, no, I can't even think of the, Ponce, Ponce. Um, they had a prison, uh, not a prison, but a county jail. Um, yeah, I guess they could call it the Puerto Rican prison. And he was a shot caller there. And he and I would sit and we would talk, and I would mention to him what I knew. I, I wrote this down, too. I've actually taken what I've written down and put it on audio. And I listen to it from time to time, especially this part right here about what's getting ready to happen. I can't tell y'all what's getting ready to happen. I can only tell you after it happens. That's why I recorded it, so that I could have proof for myself, not for you, because it wasn't information for you. That's why I can't talk about it before. I can only talk about it after. I could talk about it with those individuals that I told because I was given permission of a sort 
but I can't explain it to all of you. All I can tell you is that this is going to lead to everything. That's all I can tell you is this is going to lead to everything. What I can also say for a certainty to each one of you, back in 2017, I said when all of this is over, you'll be able to come to this channel and I will tell you what I know. I'll say the same thing again. Ten years it took for this to come about. Ten years. Now, this is not no simple little feat. Every, well, Hamas said uh, that and Israel have always done this and they've always done that. Yes, here's the problem. Go back because you can't change history. So go back and listen to the reports. How did they have all that information? Remember, there, it was an intelligence failure, but look at all the information they had. Look at all that they're reporting, and notice how they are coming to conclusions in their reports. Well, Hamas did this, and Hamas did that, and Hamas did this, and Hamas did that. They are coming to conclusions without telling anybody that they had the information in advance. They're saying that it was completely by surprise. So how could they come to such conclusion? Hamas will be responsible, blah, 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 blah. Well, how come it was Hamas? Why couldn't it have been Hamas and Hezbollah? Interesting, ain't it? Interesting, ain't it? And the border's left wide open? She says that even if a cat was to walk along the border, it would trip the alarm, and they would send the military out to that area. So how come that didn't happen this time? How come they were just coming right on in? Come on in, boys. The water's fine. Okay. Hold on now. We got some more things we need to show y'all. We, 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 ain't, we ain't stopping just there. Got to wait for it to pop back up. It may take a second because it is right here. The virtual CB is just going. You know, the C++++++++++++++. All right. Hold on. I ain't seen this one yet. This is Israel's war. Because Israel has now declared, I declare war. Israel has declared war. We are at war. Israel is right right now. Right now. Israel has Israel been in a uh, for, uh, for a year, a year now, now about, about the so-called so -called judicial, judicial reform. Hold on, y'all. Benjamin Netanyahu and the judicial reform, watch and see how everything plays into his hand. Watch and see how he gets everything he's been wanting, including when it comes time for re-election. Because he was decisive in his response. Yeah, that's how we elect people. Hold on now. Who became, who became uh, prime, minister uh, prime minister again? again. Uh, uh, Israelis have been, been taken to the streets by the hundreds of thousands protesting this wildly unpopular government. government. This is the this kind, is kind of thing that unites the country. When when you send twenty two hundred rockets, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. See, they said twenty two hundred rockets, not five thousand. But anyway, pay attention. Oh, this is the kind of thing that unites the country? Exactly. That's exactly what it does. Remember, Israel is having a lot of unrest, a lot of protests. This is the kind of thing that unites the country, just like in the United States. A lot of protests, a lot of unrest, early 2000s, especially with the election. Oh, people were very unhappy with that idiot getting put in office. Not, not elected, but put in office. And so there was a lot of disunity in the United States at that time. It just takes one event. To bring us all together so that we have a common cause. Hold on, y'all. Does the Does do the, the internal the protests, protests in Israel, in Israel fall, away fall away as Israelis, as Israelis uh, uh, rally around rally Benjamin, around Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu, who will clearly, who will clearly come down, come down on, on, uh, on, uh, on Hamas in Gaza, in Gaza with, an with an iron fist? fist. Yeah, and I, yeah and I, ladies and gentlemen, he's not coming down on Hamas. You see all the apartment buildings in the background? These are apartment buildings. These are not Hamas. This is not Hamas's headquarters. And they know that. These are apartment buildings. This is where people are living. It doesn't matter if they come out tomorrow and say, oh, no, there were Hamas militants in those buildings. They didn't have any, any intelligence, remember? It was a surprise, a complete surprise. So they just started bombing apartment buildings. Those are war crimes. They're not going to be brought up on war crimes. People are going to call out for war crimes, but they are not going to be brought up on war crime charges guaranteed let's continue shall we 
I was just in Israel covering covering those protests against against that judicial judicial effort by Netanyahu. Netanyahu. And you know, there's a lot of anger in Israel, Israel, particularly in Tel Aviv, against against Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu. This is a deeply divided country. country. Benjamin Benjamin Netanyahu's efforts to try to railroad through his judicial, what he calls it, reform. You know, that. Hold on now. I don't know. That's MSNBC. No, they're going against the grain here because they're talking against Benjamin Netanyahu and, and his stupidity. And here it is. That's MSNBC. Something. That, let me listen to this fool. See what he got to say. Because that that ain't the way it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be talking about Netanyahu going to get the support of his people because they're going to back him. The country has to come together as a result of this because they have to be united, not divided. Let's see what happens. That was, that was very, 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 contentious contentious there. There. very, very controversial. controversial. I couldn't, I couldn't think, think of a better, of a better gift, gift for Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu right, right now than this, than kind, this of kind of incursion. He can, he can, told you, told you, I told you. I ain't heard this before, but I told you this is how they do it, y'all. Don't let them do it to you. It don't go. Don't fall for the okie doke. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but this is what they do continuously. And no, I haven't listened to this before. I just, like I paused, because he was, it looked like he was going to talk about the fact that there was something going on here behind the scenes. But here he is. He now comes back and says, this is what they needed. This is what he needs. And we're going to let him continue to now prop up Netanyahu. And now, now position, position himself, himself as he has, as he has repeatedly, repeatedly throughout his throughout very long tenure, long tenure running, Israel. running Israel, he can now he say, can now say I, am I am the sole protector of this nation. nation. If you go, if you go against, against me, look at look what, what you're up against. against. And that is what we're seeing right now. He will undoubtedly, once the smoke clears, and we don't know when that's going to be. False flag! This looks like a very hot conflict and one that we haven't seen in a very long time, as you mentioned. 50 years since that Yom Kippur War. We're going to be seeing Benjamin Netanyahu, this very contentious leader a divided country. He's going to come out. I'm very sure he's going to come out and say that I am the sole protector of this country. Look at the threat that we're. Hey, didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that's exactly what this was being propped up for? So, ladies and gentlemen, before I let them continue, because again, I haven't seen this before, but we only have about 29 more seconds of him talking. This is what the media. The, these scripts are already written. He's reading from a script, ladies and gentlemen. They give him the subject matter, tell him the direction he's going, and he reads. These are not your friends. These newscasters are not your friends. But this is how you can decipher the information. This is how you can learn how to pay attention to what's not being said. You see, nobody's talking about Israel hitting apartment buildings. No one. But they will start talking about it next week. They're going to mention it uh, slightly And then they're going to come up with excuses, well, the reason why, and it's justified, and they're going to use that word a lot, or a word that is synonymous with justified. They're going to say that their actions were justified. Yeah, it just defies all logic, okay? But they're going to say that their actions were justified And not just defined, because they didn't define it. They just said it was justified, and they can't prove what makes it justified. There was a report that that Dercevich, or whatever that idiot's name is, uh, the lawyer, he's now saying that Israel should target, pay attention, Iran's nuclear reactor. These are his words, that they should target, that they're completely justified, we're targeting Iran's nuclear reactor. Ooh, doggy, that now that would really escalate things. Hold on, let me let these fools keep talking. Uh oh, I hit it twice, so one second. Not just, Not from, just the from the Palestinians, but from our neighbors. If if the Arab neighbors of Israel actually participate and, and join the cause by Hamas to participate, to participate in this fight against, against Israel, Israel, he will be, he will be able, able to say that he is the sole protector. And this is a very, very big gift for Benjamin Netanyahu. This is the point that he is making. Wait, hold on. It's a very big gift for Benjamin Netanyahu? I didn't write this. I did not tell him to say that, y'all. It's a very big gift for Benjamin Netanyahu. People are dying, and he says it's a gift. I I did not write the script, people. One second. 
that, 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 that for Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who argues that he's the guy who can, guy who can keep Israel, Israel safe, safe from the Palestinians, uh, now, uh, he's, now got he's got his opportunity. Look at that. He says he can keep Israel safe, y'all. I've got your back, homie. Now, this one right here, I have seen. I haven't seen the whole thing. It's only 40-some seconds. Now, notice that's one bomb. Now, this is from Israel. Israel's, that's a city. That, those are apartment buildings. Those are apartment buildings. That's one bomb. Well, it's actually two. That was the second explosion. So that's two. But notice, they're trying to hit these buildings right here. I want you to pay attention. They're trying to hit these. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. They're trying to hit these buildings right here. They ain't trying to hit that one over there. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. They're trying to hit these buildings right here. Hold on. One second. Two explosions. Three explosions. Hold on. Let's get... Oh, four explosions. Come on, come on. Five explosions. Uh Uh-oh. Come on, one more. Come on. That ain't it. We ain't finished. You can hear it coming. Here it come, y'all. Six explosions. Come on, give me another one. They're trying to hit that building, y'all. Now, why are they purposely trying to hit that building? Come on, got one more coming. I ain't seen this part yet, but I can hear it coming, y'all. They missed. They missed. Oh, Lord, it be. They missed. These are airstrikes, ladies and gentlemen. They were aiming for these buildings right here, and they missed every single time. They hit every other area around it. They did not hit these buildings. I am grateful for that, that these people survived. See, place on, uh, it says, are taking place on targets inside Gaza. They're targeting buildings. No, y'all, y'all don't understand. So let's play it again, Sam. Hey, Sam! Sam, play, play that again. See, two explosions, three explosions. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, give me another missile. That was eight so far. And you see, nothing is, nothing is burning. That's just. Nine ten. Come on, give me give me another one. Nothing is burning, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing has collapsed because they're not hitting the buildings, but they are targeting the buildings. They are targeting the buildings. And you notice they're targeting the more populated buildings. And they're gonna get away with it. Why? Because the United Nations is going to support them. The United Nations is saying, well, let's look at the Orwellian, because this is the comment that somebody makes. Talking about the Orwellian, uh, Brussels is creating an Orwellian world in front of our eyes. They buy and supply weapons through European peace facilities. They want to control the media through the Media Freedom Act. We didn't fight the communists to end up in 1984. (laughs) These are stories from all over the world. This is stuff that um, people are talking about that y'all need to be aware of. Uh, let's see. This is Poland negotiate migration. Back. Have, no, I don't kind of care problem. about the migration. This is what I care about. Is this stuff right here? This is supposed to be coming from Hezbollah and Lebanon. Okay, Let, ladies and gentlemen. This is them saying Iran is getting involved in the war, okay? Because Iran knows that Israel will eventually attack them. Syria is going to be involved in this war because Syria realizes, like Iran did, I'm not Iran, but Israel uh, hit one of their facilities last week. This has been going on. This is Dertrovich, and this is Alan Dertrovich. Of course, he claims to be Jewish. And now he's going to talk about how they have a right. It's good to see you remotely. Um, I saw you in New York recently. It was UN week. I believe you were also spending some time with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu recently. Uh, tell us your thoughts on uh, this 
unprecedented attack on a, on a holy day on the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a holy day. The 50th anniversary. Man, do you see that? The 50th anniversary? What a way to celebrate. What a perfect gift for Benjamin Netanyahu to have an event happen almost on the exact same day. And technically, you need to pay attention. It happened on the 6th. Remember, their days are from sundown to sundown, not from sun up to sun up. It's sundown to sundown. So roughly about 5.30 every afternoon is the end of the day to 5.30 in the afternoon being the end of that complete 24-hour day. So it happened on the 6th. Don't let nobody tell you different. It is exactly on the anniversary. And they say that it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Hamas did it on that day because they wanted to mark the anniversary. As I said back in 2021, Arabs don't do that. It's Americans, that Western thinking that focuses on stupid days and anniversaries. They don't operate that day. Go back and look at when you saw them sending suicide bombers throughout the 90s. They didn't pick a day that everybody's expecting something to happen. They picked the day where nobody's expecting anything to happen because that's how you cause the most carnage. And because the Israelis... The people, the civilians, did not expect anything to happen. They were caught completely off guard. So Israel was taken completely off guard, the people, but not the government, not the military. Alan, shut up and go ahead and tell us what you got to say. I'm sure, I'm that, sure you that you have a lot of friends, of, uh, friends and a reaction to this. I do. I do. Uh, this is not a time for a partisan division over Israel, either in the United States or in Israel. Uh, all Americans should stand together with Israel. There is one villain here, and that villain is Iran. If Hold on. Why Iran? Because of Hezbollah. But it wasn't Hezbollah. They were saying Hamas. Yes, but Iran controls Hamas. Excuse me? Ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure you guys understand what's going on here. He says that Americans need to unite with Iran. Why does Americans need to unite with, I mean, not Iran, but uh, Israel? Why do we need to unite with Israel? I don't need to unite with anybody. I'm completely neutral. I'm not taking no sides in no war. I don't care who wins. Israel ain't did nothing to support me, help me, back me up, ain't, ain't, ain't protected me from nothing. So, no, Israel, I ain't, I ain't behind y'all. Y'all blowing up people in apartment buildings. How am I going to support that? What, what y'all what y'all think? Y'all want to be, excuse me, accessories after the fact or accessories before the fact? Do you just want to be an accessory? I'm an ensemble. Ladies and gentlemen, there is culpability with taking sides. You may choose to take a side. You may choose to be on Israel's side, on America's side, on Iran's side, on Hezbollah's side, on Hamas' side. There are sides to pick and choose from. I choose to be neutral. I choose to point out the obvious. Hey, hey, get out of the way. No, just because you pink and an elephant don't mean you need to be in my way. Get on out of the way. I see you there. It ain't like ain't nobody noticing you. Y'all need to pay attention to that pink elephant. He going to keep letting y'all know he in the room. Israel will, will never, ever, ever deter, deter Hamas, Hamas attacking from attacking you for two reasons. Uh, uh, number one, number one uh, uh, Hamas, Hamas are, are suicide, suicide attackers. They can't, they can't be deterred, deterred by the threat of death. Of death. Second, they Second, they don't make the decision. The decision is made by, by, Iran. by Iran. They, they, they are, are the ones who call, call all the shots. Trying to now sitting back laughing, saying, oh, Israel will lose hundreds of people. Palestinians will lose hundreds of people. Now, what you guys are not understanding here, they're doing something here at this vehicle. This is said to be Hamas. And as you can see, this is a facility and there are military equipment here. But this is a target. Somebody has just targeted them. I'm going to let him speak again, but I want you to see the firing on that vehicle. Okay, because that's important for you to understand what's going on here. See, there is nothing. Oh, he just took him away, but they're going to show it to you again. So wait, let's do it a second. See, you just saw it, and now 
That's why and he runs, and, and one of them got injured, and that's what he's dragging him away for. And then they want to show people celebrating as if it's wrong, and now this is a hostage, and there's nothing they can do about it, husband and wife possibly, or brother and sister. Okay. No, we're going to cut him off because cooperate together and to put an end. The right for the United States and Israel to cooperate together. Where is that right at? Where is that right? Where is that right at? Sorry, these are other stories. Tom Hanks, you're in the news now, homie. All right, those are other stories. What I want to do is I want to get back to the topic at hand, ladies and gentlemen that I was going to do the video immediately when I saw that it's happening, talking about false flags, but it was too early. So I waited until the last part of the evening after I'd already been up for 12 hours. I've been up since 5 o'clock, so two hours. But yesterday, 12 hours, I was up, and I did that video right about 7 o'clock my time to let everybody and their grandmama know that they were going to claim that's their 9-11. I got a message this morning from someone saying, they're saying this is Israel's 9-11. Ta-da. Because it's a script. And it's written by AI, ladies and gentlemen. All they're doing is following a script because the AI did a predictive model as to what everybody's reaction would do and would be. And yes, people like me, they knew that we would do videos exactly like this, explaining exactly what we're explaining. And they know that most of the people are not going to listen because they just put on their machines. Google and all of the other social media networks blocking everybody from putting up certain information. That's what they did so that nobody believes. And they kept talking about fake news, fake news, fake news. Who was the first person to come up with fake news? Ladies and gentlemen, who was the – wait, hold on. Caused by the clot shot. Okay, that's uh, headline news. We'll get back to the real news in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Wasn't it Donald Trump? Donald Trump, fake news, <clears throat> fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. Just kept saying it over and over and over again. And you guys think that he's not a puppet. I'm not your puppet. Okay. <sighs> Keep watching the yellow balloon and the orange balloons and the purple balloons and the gray balloons and the green balloons. and the. Keep watching the balloons, ladies and gentlemen. Keep watching the distractions so that you don't pay attention to what's actually going on. They, just like with 9-11, didn't they keep saying terrorist attack, terrorist attack, terrorist attack, terrorist attack? That's all we heard every day, all day long, terrorist attack, terrorist attack, terrorist bombing, even though it wasn't a bombing, terrorist bombing, terror bo terrorist attack. You go to 9-11 and the bombing of the World Trade Center, that's what you'll hear people say, the bombing of the World Trade Center is when they're, Technically, was no accusation of bombs, except for the people who were actually there. <coughs> Excuse me. I heard a bomb going off. I heard about six, seven different explosions in the building before the building collapsed. That's what we heard back then, but nobody paid attention to those. All the people who were there, eyewitnesses who spoke out about what they actually heard, the ones who, especially that guy who worked for the, um, the so-called housing development department the you know what i don't know why i can't even come up with the acronym right now oh well the federal housing administration uh the one who worked for that agency ladies and gentlemen he ended up dead a couple of months later just dead he told everybody that the fire was very little there wasn't a lot of fire but the firemen weren't there. there. There was nobody there to try to put out the fire, but it was not a lot of fire. And a police officer was coming by and told him, she's going to blow, she's going to blow. Police officer. And nobody ever talked about those stories ever again. Well, here we are, people talking at the very beginning. There was no military. Watch, they're going to beef up security. Watch this. They're going to beef up security, and they're going to do a clamp down on all Israeli citizens. They're going to do a clamp down. Go, go, mark my word. They're going to get into that RFDI chips and all of that uh, no cash money. Every country is going to the no cash. They're all going to digital currency. This is going to be the 
call for that in Israel. The people are going to rally around the government because they're going to manipulate the simple-minded. The same as they're going to manipulate the simple-minded here, the same as they did in 9-11. They go after the simple-minded because you know why the simple-minded? Because there's too many of them. And when they all join together, they are a mighty force. All you have to do is point them in the direction. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. We have uh, allergy seasons out here because it's that time of year, fall and spring. Those are my years. All right, ladies and gentlemen, manipulation. Manipulation of the mind, programming. They have, for 22 years, programmed all of you so that you believe in the okie doke Don't fall for the okie doke ladies and gentlemen. Don't fall for that basic, simple, stupid junk that a five-year-old kid would come up with. The AI system is not intelligent, and that's what all of you, you're more than welcome, Miss Mo. Um, that's what all of you don't realize. The AI systems are not intelligent. There is nothing about the AI system that speaks to intelligence. Do you know why? Because the AI system is created by man. The AI system is not developing itself. It is not self-aware. It could never be self-aware. The AI system is programmed by man. It does not have an original thought. Now, see, that's what you guys don't get. Man cannot create something that can think on its own. We keep letting them tell us that the system is self-aware and it can think on its own. No, it can't. It can only extrapolate the information that's been programmed into it, and it can only extrapolate from its experiences. So it doesn't think on its own. It thinks according to the programming. Now, if you don't believe me, go ahead and take a look at your children. You are the programmers, and then their experiences also help to implant other programs. Your child cannot come up with an idea on how to create renewable energy if that wasn't a thought that was already placed in its mind at the very beginning. The influence has to come from someplace. So there is no such thing as self-aware. Any one of us, any one of us who think that we are self-aware, we are on crack. We are all programmed from the time we are in an embryonic state. How do we know this? It's called genetic mapping. Everything we know, everything we knew, all of that is programmed in our cells. So there is no such thing as being self-aware. All of this information they're feeding into a computer model, it's just a matter of extrapolation. That's all it is. It is not self-aware. So the computer model is giving them scenarios. If you don't believe me, go back and watch War Games and the other movies just like it, where they feed in a scenario. So what's the scenario? <laughs> they feed in a scenario to the AI system, and the AI system gives them probabilities. It's probable. <laughs> it's probable. All right. We're going to let you guys go. We just wanted to highlight the fact that there is no way in the world Everybody could be oblivious as to what's going on. But I will say, and you mark somebody else's words, that this is going to lead to a lot of problems. This may actually be the dark winter beginning that that bumbling, clumsy idiot has been talking about for months. Okay? Look, the man trips upstairs, he trips downstairs, he just tripping. And I wish one of his aides would say, hey, Biden, <laughs> man, you tripping. Okay, I wish somebody would just say that, you know, Bi Biden, Biden, uh, what, what day is this? Uh, do, do you know where you are? Uh, I well, wish somebody would do the test on him, the cognitive test. They should have some smelling sauce or something, you know, because he ain't just falling asleep. I think he going to just stay asleep one day. He just going to just close his eyes and everybody going to think, hey, President, Mr. President, you okay? Oh God, the president, y'all, he ain't he 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 ain't waking up, okay? Because that's where he's going. That's where he's headed. Look, 
Whether or not he's a puppet or not, being in that office, he does hours worse than me. Worse than me. Some days he, and I promise you, they're giving him medication to go to sleep. Guarantee you. But they're giving him chemicals. Because what you guys don't understand, they don't care about the people they put in office as president. The puppets, they don't care about them. They will pump them full of all kind of junk, drugs and everything. All right, but enough about all that. So y'all y'all get on what you're getting on. 40 minutes of me talking about false flags. Got to go.